um, she terrorized the, uh, the people and she did that because she had the ability to transform into anybody that she wanted to be. She could be a child, she could be an old woman, she could be an old man, a husband, a wife, she could be anybody. And what made her most ter terrifying is that her whole body was made out of stone. There was really no way to kill her. And she had a weapon on her left hand, her uh, pointer finger came out into a sharp awl. And we call her spear finger. She kept that part of her body hidden under a blanket or inside a basket. And whenever she got close to somebody, uh, usually children were her easier targets. They were easier to fool. And it only took uh, her transforming into an older woman. That might look like their grandma or somebody that they knew in their village. And she would coax them over and I'd tell them to come here and let, let Granny uh, comb your hair. That little child, she'd go over there unbeknownst to her that it was spear fingers. She would sit in the, the woman's lap and that monster would start singing to that child and combing their hair, petting her, and until that child fell asleep. When that child would fall asleep, then she'd take that spear finger and pierce the side, reach in and take their liver. That's what she ate. She didn't eat anything else but liver, human liver. And she took it out and she put it in her basket. The child, the victim, didn't know that that happened because there was no scarring, there was no bruising, there was no sign that spear finger was there until four days after they'd get sick and they would die. Then it got so bad that you couldn't trust anybody, not even your own family. You couldn't trust them uh, just coming in out from a day's work or kids coming in uh, out from playing. They, they didn't trust nobody. They couldn't even trust their neighbors. And she had the entire nation closed up and isolated from one another because of how she was doing and what she was doing. But the people knew and understood they couldn't live like that. Everything was out of balance and they, they, they couldn't be isolated from one another. So they held a big council and they talked and discussed about the things that they were, uh, plans that they could do, uh, ideas to see what they could do to get rid of this monster. And finally it was decided that they would go out and dig a great big pit, so wide and so deep, and they covered it with branches and leaves and stuff and concealed it so it looked just like a trail. This happened around fall time, whenever they'd go out and they'd get the uh, hickory nuts and walnuts and other things like that to, uh, for the winter. And they had lookouts. Sure enough, here come that witch. She walked, she mumbled to herself. She, she always had liver on her mind. She was talking about how, like she, how she liked to eat it, how she liked to, uh, the taste of it, the, everything that you could imagine. She talked to herself about it. And she made her up her way up the ridge. And one of the men seen her and told everybody else. They said, well, better get ready. And they got all hidden. And she made her way down that trail. She came on down. As soon as she got to where that pit was, she took one step and she fell in. As soon as she fell in, those warriors, they gathered around that, that hole and they started shooting arrows at her. But they only bounced off because her body was made out of stone. But they seen the actual uh, form of spear fingers. She wasn't just an old lady. She was worse than that. They could see patches of skin uh, torn out in the inlay of the stone that made her body. And they seen that dreaded spear finger on her left hand. She was climbing and clawing, swarping at them uh, men with her finger. and. 
telling them all kinds of awful things of what she was going to do to them after she got out of there. But the men kept shooting their arrows. They, they knew they had to find some way to kill her. Well, while they kept on the assault, there were two birds that uh, went and perched in a tree. First one to sing was Titmouse. It started singing. And the way it sounded, it sounded like he was saying the heart. They took that as a sign, so they aimed where the heart should be. But the arrows only bounced off and broke. That just made her even more mad. She kept clawing and trying to get out of that pit. They caught that mouse. It was a titmouse bird. They caught it and cut its tongue out. We know it as a lie. Second bird came was a chickadee. We call it chickadee. Chickadee, he did something that that other bird didn't. He started flying around that left hand. In the palm of her left hand was her heart. She always kept her feet and kept it in a fist. She seen what that chickadee was doing and got scared. She started swarping at that bird. They took that as a sign. One of the warriors took his arrow, drew it back, aimed it at the left hand, and he let go of that arrow, and it shot just as true as it could, and pierced the left palm of Spearfinger, and she fell in that pit dead. There was violence back in the world after that. People were able to trust one another. But that chickadee we know as a truth teller. And every time we hear it singing around the house, we know we're going to have visitors. It could be a family. It could be a friend. It could be the cops. You never know, but somebody's coming. Uh, but that's the story of Spearfinger, and that's, that's the uh, song that I made up for it.